If there's anything that you'd like me to show you, like me to go into a little bit more detail regarding a mini session, just send me a message over and I'll do my best, you know, to get them all produced for you because ultimately I want to give you what you want to see. Now, uh, what Jason wanted to see was about jigger fishing. Now, to be honest, I'm no means a jigger expert. The venues that I go to, I think it's very much down to the rules. So, a lot of the venues I go to, bar in Lindon, which has now changed the rules, you're allowed to overshot a rig. And I think it's important to understand what a jigger's there for. A lot of places that ban overshotting actually allow a jigger. And what it is, is a rig which is sort of an overshotted rig. The float is there, but you're not looking at it like a fixed float, like a fixed rig, where the float goes under your strike and the fish is on. Your line is sliding through the float, so it's basically a self-hooking method. What I say, I'm by no means a jigger expert. It's only really when I went to Lindome. So thinking about that, where a jigger is allowed, a lot of the time it has to flow. So first thing when it comes to is actually, you know, the floats in terms of, you know, what float would you look to use? Again, it's, think about the fishery rules. Are you allowed to overshot? Now, if you're allowed to overshot, you can still use a jigger. And truthfully, I probably don't use it enough because there are definitely times with a jigger, whereas with an overshotted rig or a fixed rig, you can only search that depth that the rig is set at, or if it's an overshotted rig, basically as far as you can lower your pole tip. What the advantage of a jigger gives you is you can search a lot more of the water column. I think the other massive advantage with a jigger is because it's a self-hooking rig, when you are at a venue where there's lots of small fish, lots of little roach, so like High Port Tunnel is a perfect example, it's quite deep, you've got a lot of water to go out, but there's a lot of little tinies, a jigger on that lake can be brilliant because the fish are that small, as you're lowering your rig and lifting it up, they're not big enough to hook themselves. So you could have a peg full of roach with an odd F1, but because, you know, the small size of the roach, as you're lifting and lowering your rig, they can take your bait, but because they're not big enough to turn and sort of tighten the line up to hook their self, you can fish and be able to catch the F1s when you've got a lot of tiny fish in your peg. I feel like that's, in, you know, for my fishing as such, that's where it will be really suitable. That's probably my line being too long. It could be um, that, some, again, something just grabbed it then. Just lower it down. Slowly lower it. Again, changing the speed in which you're lowering that. So I've had two little dinks then. So feed twice. Leave me rigging just a little bit lower then. Just lift it up, slowly lower it down. But it's counting in between your feeds. So just before I'm gonna feed again, that's when I slap my rig. I never slap my rig whilst I'm feeding. Your little routine, go out, slap your rig, make a bit of noise. I think that I'm actually fishing, to be honest, too deep now. There's that many fish come in the peg. And this is where it changes. But yeah, sorry, your little routine, I keep, um, it's hard trying to concentrate on the fishing that you're not used to doing. But yeah, go out feed your bait twice whatever bait whatever amount that you feel is the right amount to feed and then you want to be feeding i'm going to say somewhere in between 8 and 12 seconds i think is is the optimum time but what you what i don't think you want to do is be slapping your rig when you're feeding i think that's a mistake that i see a lot of people make the fish they're only there because we fed and that whatever noise you make, whether on a fixed rig, um, an overshotted rig, tapping, slapping there. So I'm just gonna go down to a bulk now because I can see just how many fish are there. It's definitely changed. So again, slide it down. I'm gonna slide my back shot down, sort of 10 inch roughly, 13 inch, that's all right. Because everything's really high and the, you know, you can see them swimming around. A lot of them are carp. That's what you'll see swimming around. So yeah, your little routine, go out, slap your rig, make a bit of noise, and then hold your rig or lower it to the depth. You know, if we was catching, say, between two and three foot, 
you might not want to slap your rig just go out swing your rig out move that bottom shot up so you're starting at two foot and then you drop a you know your top shot at say three foot that's your little window whatever the window is that's where you're lifting and lowering your rig but the most important thing is